business lives on the fact. Thank you for staying with us on World Now. We are still talking about the Israel-Hamas war and the new dimensions it's taken with uh, the Peja and walkie-talkie attacks in Lebanon, which are reportedly targeting uh, Hezbollah there, which have links with uh, Hamas. Dr. Ambrose Igboke, Global Affairs Analyst, is my guest. Uh, Dr. Igboke, as it is now, Israel has indirectly acknowledged uh, that, you know, it's carried out these attacks, saying that a new, uh, it's a new era of war was beginning and that the center of gravity is actually moving north. What is the implication of this for the Middle East? The war in the Middle East. Remember that uh, before now we used to talk about rocket launching. Remember the, uh, just last week, uh, the rebels from Lebanon launched rockets into Israel even over the weekend. Uh, Israel is trying to tell the neighbors, especially its hostile neighbors, that they have the capability and the capacity to cause damage. They have demonstrated that very well this year. They took out the Hamas leader while he was on an official trip to uh, Iran. Uh, they took up a lot of uh, other uh, demonstrated capacities. Sorry about that. They demonstrate their capacity in other ways, and they have been able to assassinate people even in, uh, in, in uh, the countries of uh, residents. And this is what you call precision technology, and they have been able to use it to cause a lot of havoc. This is taking it a notch higher, and they are trying to tell their enemies that even if we don't come physically to you, even if we don't use rockets, even if we don't attack you using... Uh, uh, L, uh, rockets, bombs, or drones. We can even attack you by the very domestic things you use, like personal things, like your, your like your, uh, your tabs, like your, you know, your pagers. And um, for this, everybody's worried. You can see the, the the worry in the faces of Lebanese yesterday when it was going on. You can see pagers exploding. And the funny thing is that they were very precise. They were able to target a lot of the uh, fighters, the Hezbollah fighters. Although some casualties were recorded outside that, but we can see how precise, uh, precise this thing can be. And reports also came that some of these working dogs were produced by a company in Japan. So how did Israel get, get access? So it, it becomes more complicated. Data protection is important here. Cyber security is important here. And that means that it is not full safe that people use technology that other third parties can hack into and even use it as weak points. You see, the danger before we are, we are talking about stealing of data, uh, uh, you know, hacking and all those things. Now we are being worried that it's being used as a very, very dangerous weapon. And that's what Israel has demonstrated. And it's the truth, it is very dangerous for its neighbors. All right. And, you know, sources say that Israel actually told the U.S. of its plans to for an operation in Lebanon, but did not provide the details. So could the U.S. be complicit in all of this? Well, U.S. US is always um, in support of uh, Israel. Uh, it has been like that. And this uh, new relationship has been very uh, well, especially it was cemented after the Second World War. Um, history has it that... Uh, the person who used this theory of relativity to manufacture the war, the bomb that ended the Second World War that America used uh, when uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked by Japan, uh, America retaliated with a bomb uh, created through uh, a, an Israeli, a Jew, called uh, uh, Albert Einstein. And uh, the theory of relativity led to that bomb that uh, was used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And that was the, uh, uh, that was caused the end of the war. And remember the state, state of Israel was also created after that war, you know, and then if you check the business in uh, America, United States, their commerce, their politics, a lot of things in the United States of America is actually driven by American Jews. So you cannot, the oblique code of the Jews and the uh, and United States are tight. So you cannot, there's nothing the world can do about it. And uh, the, 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 that shows that whatever Israel does, America will support it. But America can, when Israel is going beyond uh, maybe boundaries, America can step in and say, okay, can we have this line? But uh, Israel has also said that if in case, 
the United States of America refuses to back it up, that she, as Israel, has the capacity to defend itself in whatever means and in whatever way they want. I know one thing about Israel. They don't give a hoot of what the United Nations is talking about, or ICC, or whoever. They don't care. All they want is retaliation, and they'll do it their own way, whether you have a resolution against it or not. And Israel has shown that they are above the law, and even international laws. All right. Dr. Amrit Sibokhe, Global Affairs Analyst, thank you so much for talking to us on World Now. In the meantime, Israel security forces have said that an Israeli citizen has been arrested for allegedly being suspected to be part of Iran's plot to assassinate Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They say his targets were included, uh, included Israel's defense minister and the head of internal security agency Shin Bet. Israeli police and domestic intelligence say the man was twice smuggled into Iran and received payments to carry out missions. In a joint statement, they said the suspect was a businessman who had lived in Turkey and had Turkish contact who had helped get him into Iran. The announcement comes at a time of soaring tension between Iran and Israel, regional arch enemies. <laughs> Let's look at other matters. North Korean state media say the country's leader, Kim Jong-un, has overseen the successful test of two types of tactical ballistic missiles, including one with a super-large conventional warhead and an improved cruise missile. President Kim was reported as saying the tests were reportedly a response to the threats posed by outside forces to North Korea's security. He also says there is a need for North Korea to continue to bolster up its nuclear force to have the stronger technical and offensive capability and the field of conventional military weapons too. South Korea's military and a number of political analysts have suggested North Korea is testing weapons with a view to exporting them to Russia.